Texas Senator John Cornyn, thank you so much. As you know, Vice President Harris has now arrived in El Paso, but you were very critical of where on the border she is visiting. Why is that? Well, we've got a big border, as you know, Jack, and uh, it's 1,200 miles long. She's picked uh, the place where, frankly, it's the least representative of the, uh, the crisis we're having. And the epicenter of that is the Rio Grande Valley. Um, and I would think that she would want to go to where the action is to uh, listen and learn. Part of the problem I, I have with the administration's approach is not just the delay. It's been almost 100 days since President Biden named her as the point person, but also they seem to just not get what the problem is. When she goes to Central America and says she wants to talk about the source of the problem, well, the, the immediate source of the problem is, is the open border policies announced by the Biden administration. Um, and that's why people continue to come. Well, just yesterday, the White House said it inherited a broken and uh, what, what was the termination they used? A broken and inhumane immigration system, and they're trying to rebuild it because they said that under the Trump administration, uh, they didn't have enough beds for unaccompanied minors. They cut aid to Central America and they shut down the asylum system. So how do you respond to that? Well, it's pretty clear to me that the Biden administration simply does not want to enforce the law. That's what the uh, Border Patrol and other officials are obligated to do. And it's Congress that passes the laws. If Congress needs to change the laws, then that's the place to have that discussion, not to basically ignore the law and just to wave people across the border. So I get it. They want to blame all their problems on the previous administration. That works maybe for a little while, but it's not going to work forever. And it's not going to solve the current humanitarian crisis at the border where we saw 180,000 migrant encounters just last month, and it's getting worse. And we, I took a look at some of the Border Patrol statistics uh, yesterday, and there have been, since the fiscal year began in October through the end of May, nearly 585,000 migrants who've crossed into Texas illegally, which is far higher, uh, about 400,000 more than the same time period the year before. Um, I would imagine some of that is due to COVID, but um, what's your thought about those statistics? And do you think the problem is going to get worse based on some of the policy changes that the administration has discussed? Well, actually, Jack, COVID would be a reason why we would have more restrictive policies and make sure that people are tested before they are admitted into the United States so they don't spread uh, the virus further. Uh, there's something called Title 42, which, as you know, which is a public health order, which restricts cross-border traffic to just essential, um, essential trade and travel. So when that expires, and it probably will here in the not too distant future, things are gonna get any, even worse. The Border Patrol tells me that right now that gives them an essential tool to at least return single adults across, back across the border who are trying to enter illegally but they're, they are genuinely afraid that they will um, lose control entirely. And one, one other point that I think is really critical here is that 40% of the border patrol are having to leave the front lines of uh, border enforcement in order to take care of unaccompanied children. Now we all believe that we should take care of these children in a compassionate and humane way while they're here in our custody. But the fact of the matter is this is part of the business model of the drug cartels to, to load the zone, flood the zone, uh, so Border Patrol can has to get offline, and then they run illegal drugs across the border, which took the lives of 90,000 Americans just last year alone. So this is, um, you know, the cartels understand our border better than the Biden administration, and they're playing it, and they're exploiting, uh, exploiting it to their advantage. So in your view, what is the solution? Well, I've introduced a bipartisan, bicameral bill uh, with Senator Sinema, Democrat from Arizona, Henry Cuellar, and Tony Gonzalez from Texas, that would that would uh, create regional processing centers that would at least relieve the burden on Border Patrol to deal with uh, this flood of children and families coming across the border and take them offline. It would also expedite consideration of any legitimate claims like asylum. 
but the truth is only about 10% of the asylum claims ultimately are adjudicated in favor of the migrant. 90% fail to meet the legal test and need to be returned to their country of origin. But it appears to me that uh, our democratic friends do not believe in, in border security. They don't believe in enforcing the law and they are uh, willfully blind, I think, to the, to the contribution their flawed policies are making to the current crisis. We're trying to help them. That's why I worked with Senator Sinema, another border state senator, Democrat, and uh, Henry Cuellar, a Democrat from Laredo, and, and Tony Gonzalez, who represents the largest congressional district contiguous to the U.S.-Mexican uh, border. So we're trying to offer them a solution, or at least a small step in the right direction. So far, they've been dis disinterested. I was just going to ask you, I mean, what do you think, what progress have you made in getting this passed in Congress? And uh, you've said that the administration doesn't seem interested. Who have you spoken to in the administration and what has their specific response been? Well, I've primarily been working with Dick Durbin, who's the chairman of the Judiciary Committee in the Senate, where all immigration matters are, that's part of our, our bailiwick there. Um, every time I talk to Senator Durbin about it, he wants to know, well, why can't we provide a path to citizenship for other migrants that are currently in the country, both illegally as well as the DACA population, the Deferred Action on Childhood Arrivals. I've said previously, perhaps even to you, Jack, that I believe that these children who now are adults who came in as part of the Deferred Action on Childhood Arrivals, sometimes called the Dreamers, um, deserve a legal status because they've been mired in uncertainty for the last 10 years. But I worry that I'm not sure that uh, Texans and Americans are going to allow us to demonstrate a humanitarian impulse when it comes to even these DACA recipients while this current crisis is brewing. We know that comprehensive immigration reform has failed the entire time I've been in the Senate. I've been in the middle of it each time. And so I think this is time for a targeted approach, a step-by-step -step approach. Let's get control of what's happening at the border now and then maybe we can turn to some of these other, what I would call areas of consensus, low-hanging fruit, uh, like the Dreamers, like the DACA recipients, and see if we can build some confidence and trust there. And my last question to you, Senator, is what is your direct message to the Vice President who is in Texas uh, today? It's the, uh, you need to come to grips with reality. And you're not going to do that by going to a, 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 a non-representative um, area. El Paso has its challenges, but it's nothing like the Rio Grande Valley. And our border communities are the ones that are suffering the most. Um, this is not a Hispanic versus an Anglo issue. This is not a anti-immigrant message because our immigrant, our, our, our American citizens who live along the border who are largely Hispanic are asking us uh, to do something about this because it's overrunning their capacity to deal with it. They're contributing to the flow of illegal drugs across the border. And what people want is the order and uh, predictability of legal immigration. We ought to do everything we can to encourage legal immigration and discourage and prevent illegal immigration. But that's not the message that the vice president and this administration are sending. I did have one other quick question, if I can just ask you, and that is, do you think that the administration should go back to uh, the Trump administration policy of keeping people in Mexico until their asylum claims could be heard? I think that would be a sensible move. I wish they would do it. Um, you know, it's a strange asylum system where you can travel through another country to get to the United States and still claim that you're fleeing your home country when you're no longer actually there. Um, it's a strange system. And actually this provided a, a, a modest amount of deterrence where people realized it wasn't just gonna be an open border into the United States that they'd have to actually remain in Mexico while their asylum claim is being decided. Um, we've got about a backlog of a more than a million cases in front of immigration judges. Uh, this is part of the the business model, again, of the, um, of the cartels, the human smugglers, they basically overwhelmed our capacity to deal with it. And um, this administration does not have a good grip on reality, seems willfully blind in, in many instances. And so I think 
regardless of how they feel about the previous administration. Let's talk about the policies that actually might make a positive impact. And I think the remain in Mexico policy for asylum seekers is not an unreasonable solution. And it seemed to have some impact on the flood of people coming across the border. Texas Senator John Cornyn, thank you so much for your time and your insight today. Really appreciate it.